Ready? You know what to do. Three, two, one, zero. Eyes and smiles and frozen. Nice job, boys and girls. Nice job. Hi, boys and girls. Up here. Here I am. All right. So we learned about Leonardo da Vinci. We've been talking about him. We learned that he was born in 1452. He died when he was... 67 in 1519 and it was during the renaissance period it was that which was that really cool period in time where uh, people started becoming much more civilized and interested in the arts and architecture and <laughs> next slide if i can get to it there we go and we are learning about the life artwork and techniques of the master artist leonardo da vinci and creating da vinci inspired artwork of course and we're answering the question today, will a small version of Leonardo da Vinci's parachute design really work? A little small version that you're gonna be making today. Can't wait. All right, so we took an up close look at Leonardo da Vinci and what made him so great. And we found out first who he was before the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. And we learned that he was born in 1452 in Vinci, Italy. And we learned that Da Vinci literally means from Vinci, Italy in Italian. And let's see, we learned that his, uh, his, he lived with his mom till he was eight years old. And then he moved with his father. And his father noticed his artistic talent and got him an apprenticeship with a very famous artist, sculptor, painter at the time, Verrocchio, when he was 14 years old. When he was 20 years old, just six years into that apprenticeship, Verrocchio said, hey, why don't you paint this little angel right there on the bottom corner of my painting? And his, became, his painting became very famous and people thought Leonardo's angel was the best part of his painting. And so that's how Leonardo first started becoming discovered as a super gifted and talented artist. We learned about his fascination with uh, his sketching and studying uh, human anatomy and animals. And uh, his, his sketches are used in a lot of medical journals today even. And this is how he became such a great artist, especially a figure artist, which means drawing the human body, drawing people because he used what he learned about the human body to paint masterpieces like the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. So we talked about the Mona Lisa. We learned that she is in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France, and she's not as big as we thought. She's only two and a half feet by two feet. And um, the Mona Lisa was painted on wood in 1507 when he was 55 years old. And he carried it around with him for 10 years until he sold it finally in 1517 to the King of France for 4,000 gold crowns. And guess what I learned? The crown, it's not actual crowns. Crowns for just a short period of time was a form of currency like the dollar bill in, um, in, Italy, in France at the time. So. That was a long time ago, 4,000 gold crowns. And we learned that her smile and her identity are part of the mystery. We don't, we're not really sure who the Mona Lisa is. We think she's Miss Lisa Gerardini Giacondo, the wife of a wealthy Italian man who may have asked Da Vinci to paint her portrait. We learned about her eyes and wherever you stand, she'll always appear to be looking at you. And we learned that she, the Mona Lisa, is valued at $700 million and was stolen in 1911. It was missing for two years. And they even thought Pablo Picasso, who painted that beautiful artwork, and we, we know him very well, was the, uh, the thief. But he wasn't, he wasn't, the thief was caught. All right, we talked about The Last Supper, that it took him four years to paint, that it's considered to be one of Da Vinci's greatest paintings. And then it's of the Christian Bible story about Jesus and his 12 disciples and their last meal together. Uh, just before Jesus announces that one of them will portray him. And we looked at the expressions on their face and, and how, uh, how realistic they look. And we learned that it's painted on, the Last Supper is painted on the wall of a dining room in a church in Italy. And in 1815, 
uh, during the Napoleonic War, <clears throat> uh, the, they used it as a military base in the painting for target practice. So it survived two wars, even survived World War II when a missile hit, oh no, right next to the church. And it survived. There's the one wall with it standing. The only wall that's completely intact is the one that's kind of, you can't see it, but it's all because it's all barricade, barricaded up. But the Last Supper is on that wall. So, whoo, that was amazing. We learned that there's so much more about Leonardo da Vinci that we could, didn't have time to talk about. But today we're going to talk a little bit more about him. This is called the Vitruvian Man. You may have seen this picture. This is a sketch that he, he made. And this is when he was studying the human body. He was studying human proportions. And he learned some pretty cool things about the human proportion and the human body uh, that's typical of a human body. Like, it's typical. It's not, not always the case. But usually, if you put your arms out, like your wingspan straight out, from the tip of one finger to the tip of the other finger, that's about how tall you are. And he also discovered that <clears throat> if you were to hold your arms up like this and your legs out, like you can see in the, uh, the picture where he's, his fingertips are touching the circle and his feet are on the circle, kind of uh, spread out a little bit, then that makes the circle. And the very center of that circle is your belly button. So he, he learned some things like that in his study. And uh, he calls this the Vitruvian Man. Oh, we learned that he was not just an artist, not just a painter or sculptor, but he was an inventor. And he dreamed up all kinds of inventions. Most of those inventions just were on paper. He didn't actually build them. Uh, he only lived to be 55, remember, or 67. <laughs> all right, like the water lift, the catapult. I know you know about the catapult. Thread cutter, the machine gun, the landing gear, these are all inventions that he dreamed up and sketched out. And most of them were later created. Uh, a couple of them were not, like uh, he was really studied flight very much. He was very curious and interested in flight, so he studied birds. And he tried to create, this is way before airplanes and helicopters, he tried to create some flying machines or contraptions. And here's some examples. And uh, the one at the bottom there, the helicopter design. And another uh, aerial uh, invention that he created was the practical design for a parachute. He was the first back in 1485. And this is what we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on this sketch that he created. And you can see some writing next to it. And that's writing is kind of written in code. We'll talk about that later. But he describes the, the shape and the dimensions and how to to design or how to build this parachute. His parachute was actually to be made out of wood and linens and rope. And in the year 2000, look at that picture at the bottom, the colored picture, a daredevil actually attempted the exact build to the exact specifications that Leonardo da Vinci came up with and sketched out to see if his parachute would really work. And guess what? It did. In fact, the guy said it worked about as good or even better as a, a contemporary um, parachute, parachute of today. So we learned that when we combine art, my favorite subject, with science and technology and engineering and math, then we call that STEAM. And, oh, before we talk more about the parachute, we have to learn about the Da Vinci Code. Have you ever heard of this, the Da Vinci Code? Well, Leonardo wrote in Italian, right? Because he was Italian, using a special kind of, we call it shorthand, but it's kind of cryptic writing. That's right. So instead of writing common words like the, or these, or this, or he, or it, you know, he just wrote uh, little symbols or letters to uh, symbolize those longer words. And so that's shorthand. So he wrote in Italian, he wrote in shorthand, that he invented himself because he didn't want anybody to know he didn't want anybody to open up all his uh studies all the studies and all the notes that he took he had taken and all his designs and inventions he didn't want somebody to come in and just steal all that so he wrote sort of cryptically in this uh in this abbreviated shorthand and he did more he also wrote in something <laughs> called mirror writing Mirror writing, think about that. What do you think that means, mirror writing? Ah, well, you know when you 
look into a mirror and you raise your right hand, the reflection back, when you look into the mirror, the guy in the mirror is raising his left hand. You're raising your right, he's raising his left. It's a mirror image. And he did that with writing without using a mirror. He just wrote backwards, completely backwards, starting at the right side of the page, moving left. And only when he was writing something intended for other people uh, um, did he write normal, in the normal direction. So together with the mirror writing and the abbreviated shorthand, this cryptic writing is called the Da Vinci Code. And here's a little example of it. You wouldn't be able to read that because it's in Italian, but it is written completely backwards, mirror writing. So guess what we're gonna do is a little mini activity today on a scrap piece of paper. You're gonna to try to write your name using Da Vinci's mirror writing. So let's give that a shot. You're gonna take the paper and you're gonna, you can, if you want to, you can set your paper up like this. And on one side, doesn't matter which side, you can write your name the, normally. And then on the other side, you pretend a mirror is right in the middle. And on the other side, you would write it completely backwards. That means your capital letter would be at the end, rather at the beginning on your mirror writing image. All right, let's give that a shot. All right, how'd you do? What did you learn from trying this yourself? Was it easy? Was it hard? Could you write a whole manuscript, a whole book like this? It'd be difficult, wouldn't it? All right, so now let's talk about creating some Da Vinci-inspired artwork. We, today, we've already created the Mona Lisa. Today, we're going to create, you know it, that's right, Da Vinci's parachute. And you're going to start with this template on the left. You see this template right here with the lines that look like triangles? And you're going to turn that into this. But don't worry, it'll be fun. But first, before I tell you any more about that, give you any directions, Let's see what you've learned. What inventions, number one, what inventions of Leonardo is your favorite? Explain why. So that means you're gonna have to remember all of his inventions and choose your favorite one, and then just explain why you chose that one as your favorite invention of, of his. Number two, why do you think Leonardo was so interested in flight? That's a good question. If you remember, Leonardo, what his interests were, well, I don't want to give it away. I want to see what you come up with. Number three, how might you use mirror writing in your own life? I'm very curious about that one. I want to see how and why you would use mirror writing. All right, guys, now here we go. We're going to make our parachute and we're going to make it to the exact proportions as he sketched and noted, it's going to be shrunk down onto this page. This page has the perfect template. This page right here, perfect template. You all are going to get that template and I'll show you what to do. First, you're going to design and color and customize your chute. So this is your parachute and imagine how it's going to be in, in a triangle once we cut and glue it together. And I want you to put some kind of design, anything you want on there. You can just simply color it. You can draw some pictures of it. I've got a picture of the Mona Lisa. This says Leonardo da Vinci. I put painter, sculptor, inventor. Uh, I think 67 years for his birth and death year, 1452 to 1519, and the Renaissance period. And I, I, I would, if I'd had more time, I would have colored this all up beautifully. When you color it, be careful that you don't, um, you don't color over these lines so that you can't see them. You can color over them, but if you can't see these lines or those dashed dotted lines, then you're not going to be able to make your parachute. So be careful of that. Once you're done customizing your chute, then you're going to cut on the solid lines, not the dashed or dotted lines. You're going to cut just on the solid lines. And the way I do it, guys, is I try to cut just a hair on the outside of the black solid line just a hair on the outside so I can still see that black line. So go ahead and be very, very, very careful to do that correctly. So go ahead and cut those lines. Next, you're gonna fold on those dotted lines. That's why those lines are dotted, not to be cut, but to be, to show you where to fold. So you're gonna fold on those dotted lines.
afterwards. You're going to put glue where it says glue and glue together your triangle. All right, let me go back so I can show you where it says glue. If you're not finding it on yours, you see this little spot right here where I wrote in capital letters, G-L-U-E? That's the spot. You're going to put glue on the top, right there, right on top of where it says glue. All the way up. Don't forget up here, guys. Don't forget up there. All the way all over that, that spot. And then it, it should look like a triangle now. All right, and the hard part's done. All right, then you're going to cut out your little guy or your little girl, and you're going to fold it together just like this, if you haven't done that already. All right, so some classes, I'll let you know which class does which, but some classes are going to hole punch each corner. That's a little tricky to get it right on the corner with the hole punches that I have. But you're going to hole punch each corner, and you're going to uh, – tie or tape some string through those hole punched corners. And that's difficult guys with the hole punch because if you get that hole punch too close to the edge, then your string is just gonna rip right through that uh, edge of the paper. So usually it's easier to just tape your string to the corners. So most of the classes, I'm just gonna ask you to tape your string to the corner, maybe the inside of the corner. All right, next, you're going to hole punch or tape the bottom of the strings to the top of this little guy or girl right there. And that's it, guys. You made it. You've done it. It's difficult to make sure that your strings are the same length. Um, and that was, that was tricky. It took me a couple times to get that. So all the strings were the same length. And... Um, and it came out looking looking the way I wanted it to. But that's it. You just made a Leonardo da Vinci-inspired parachute. Now, let's wait. Let's do this all together. But all together, towards the end of class, we're going to stand up right, right at our seats. We're going to push in our chair, right behind our chairs. We're going to stand up. We're going to hold up our chutes, and we're going to drop them. We're not going to stand on our chairs or the table, but we're going to drop them and uh, see if they – slowly make their way to the ground and if they work. All right, I know you did a great job. I can't wait to see him. All right, boys and girls, that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning about Leonardo da Vinci and have a great day. Bye-bye. Some art for everyone to see.